Okay, I already share with you uh, this uh, slide, project monitoring and control, and another one is basically EVM is just extension of this uh, topic as well. And then uh, notes is very long notes about e uh, earn value management. You can see all the example inside there, and I do have all uh, many many uh, short video on EVM. If you have uh, time, uh, go to your e-learning and take a look at those uh, short, short video, which basically uh, I got from YouTube anyway. Uh, short video, sometimes five minutes, that explain very well about the concept of uh, EVM. Okay, now let's start with this uh, topic first. Uh, project monitoring and control. Okay, now let's go into uh, this slide. So this slide simply tell us uh, about project monitoring and control where basically it fit into planning and scheduling. Remember, if for instance, maybe you are well versed about project management, you you will basically you do have one class, project management. Okay, if you learn project management from, uh, for instance, PMBOK, okay, uh, body of knowledge or any other sources, you will notice that project management process consists of initiating, planning, and then implementing, monitoring and control, and then closing. So the word monitoring and control is there. So similarly, uh, in uh, this, uh, for the planning alone, specifically for planning, Perhaps you can still remember in your first uh, test, I asked you about the uh, step in uh, project planning or scheduling. So basically we start with the uh, plan project scheduling with the planning itself, okay? Identify what are the things that we need to, to implement in terms of scope of work, et cetera, et cetera. And then we determine activities. Where do we get activities? through the concept of uh, WBS, Work Breakdown Structure, okay? So from Work Breakdown Structure, we can split into a small, smaller portion so that at the end, uh, so that we can better manage uh, that activity once we attach uh, certain quantities to that. And then uh, we can determine what, uh, what we call resources, okay? Actually, we want to determine the duration, but in order to determine the duration, you need to figure out what could be the resources. This is where uh, we learn about uh, man, machine, and material uh, in, this, in the second uh, week of the class, material, human, and equipment, or machine, which basically can influence the activity duration. Remember, how do we calculate activity duration through the concept of productivity rate? We need to know what are the machine that we are going to use because every machine do have the output capacity. We need to know who, uh, how many laborer, who are the laborer. So that will be the labor constant or the productivity rate for the labor. And then uh, what could be the construction method Construction method basically will determine uh, uh, dependency, which basically uh, we relate to a predecessor. There are four types of predecessor, finish to start, start to start, start to finish, and finish to finish. Okay, so activity duration, in order to determine, we need to identify what are the right resources. If you, if you uh, combine the wrong resources, yeah, you can perform the activity, maybe in a very short period of time, but the issue of the cost. We do not want to implement the work according to progress, but then the cost is very high. We are not going, going to get a um, maximum profit. And then after we input all the information in terms of the project duration, dependency, then we have to go back and take a look at our schedule, whether we have optimized the resources or not. So this is what we have learned in uh, 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 resource smoothing and leveling. That is just one example. 
And then um, in resource uh, smoothing, for instance, uh, there is no point that we input all the resources nicely. Okay, fine. But then at the end of the day, we figure out there could be a resource conflict. Okay, resource conflict, or even um, sometimes we use resources more than what we are supposed to, to, to use, and we still need to pay for the machine and man while doing nothing. So we must basically use resources as optimum as possible as we, uh, we could basically uh, implement the work at the minimum cost. When we implement the work at minimum cost, then basically, then only we can uh, maximize the profit. Okay, so that will be the planning process. And there is one big topic that we call project monitoring and control. Normally sit uh, at the end corner of whatever diagram that you can use. So it, it doesn't mean that project monitoring and control uh, when you look at this thing in sequence, no, it, it's going to come last. No, normally project monitoring and control have to be in tandem or in parallel uh, with implementing process. Yeah, for sure, you need to plan first and then you need to implement. When you implement certain portion of uh, the work, then you need to do the monitoring, then you need to do contr controlling while uh, the project is still in progress. Okay, so that is what project monitoring and control uh, in terms of the importance uh, with regard to the uh, uh, even the project management process or even specifically uh, project planning process. Okay, now we come into this uh, um, topic in terms of the, the definition. What is project monitoring? Monitoring and control is always being used uh, together. It is like planning and scheduling. You cannot basically have uh, uh, control without monitoring. And uh, vice versa, you cannot have monitoring without the control. It is basically useless. So that's why they are being used together. But they are being defined uh, separately. Project monitoring is the process of collecting, recording, and reporting information, or getting all kind of feedback in order to know the status of the uh, project. It can be used in many, 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 many aspects. Not only scheduling. It can you can use in uh, uh, scheduling is basically time management. We can use in uh, cost management safety management, environmental management, in all aspects of what we call uh, project requirement, okay? But we just want to zoom into uh, uh, project scheduling. So this is just generic uh, definition anyway. So once we know the status of uh, certain things that we want to measure, then only we can react. So react is basically the process that we call control. Remember in uh, ISO, normally we are we normally going to see this thing PDCA uh, damming cycle. Maybe you are familiar with this thing. So P, the first P is basically the plan. D is do implementing. C is what what we call check. Check is basically equivalent to monitor. In another word, so checking monitoring is the same thing. Then A is basically control. A is basically act. You need to act. So basically you need to uh, control your project so that it will not be uh, beyond what basically your expectation anyway. So this process is going on and on. So that's why the damming cycle uh, do draw this uh, what we call arrow in, to indicate that uh, as long as your project uh, not finished yet, that is the thing that you have to face never never ending uh, what we call a process okay because you never know even though you have corrected uh, take a corrective action then you input those things into a revised plan but again when you implement those things you never know things might not go according to your plan again because there are so many things that uh, influence the success of the project, okay? So why do we monitor? What, when, and how, okay? 
what uh, why do we monitor well this the the only reason is because there is no such thing uh, as a perfect plan we as human being we cannot do uh, planning perfectly only god can do that okay so it is okay if uh, you uh, you see there is a deviation in your original plan that is okay don't be panic what we need to do is basically we need to monitor this is what we call detect and then uh, detect is basically the monitoring react is the control thing so we detect to what extent uh, the plan basically goes uh, beyond what uh, we expect, whether it is a big or small. Maybe we can uh, KIV the small, small things. We focus on the big, big impact first, and then we do some kind of recalibration. Uh, perhaps we come back to the what we we expect. Okay. What do we monitor? There are a lot of things. Okay. If you look at planning scheduling itself. Remember, man, machine, and material is uh, uh, all the resources that we input into our scheduling. And the money is the, the one that we use to uh, buy material, uh, pay uh, the workers' uh, management, and then uh, uh, pay the machines. So that is when the money basically come into this, uh, this position. And remember, all these things have something to do with what we call time, or basically, it is the scheduling or duration that we are concerned in what we call um, specifically with regard to planning scheduling. But all these things can basically relate to many, many aspects. If we are talking about project management in general, even space, what is space? The space is um, the space that you have on, the, uh, on your construction site, for instance. If you are working in a very tight space, uh, then uh, you need to, the logistic issue will be, is a big thing that you need to manage. You cannot basically dump or bring all the material and dump onto your project site because it is, you have a space constraint. So in this situation, the logistic must be uh, done very carefully because you, you don't have the space in order to, to put everything. Uh, that is example and when you do not have the big space to work with it for sure will influence your scheduling or planning because everything you must consider about the traffic jam uh, about many many things that is example and not to mention many many aspects this is just example quality we can put into this uh, safety aspect as well environmental aspect and then how about the contractual matters? So those things, especially with regard to dispute, et cetera, et cetera, it can grow bigger and bigger if you do not settle those things once and for all. So there are many, many things that you need to monitor. Okay, what do we monitor? This could be uh, seen as input and then normally time. Okay, we do have what we call physical progress money we do have the output for instance uh, financial progress and then uh, uh, resources okay we, we need to relate to when basically job start because we need to acquire the material just on time we do not want to put to bring all the material too early otherwise it will get stolen or basically it will basically uh, being damaged due to weather condition etc etc and even uh, we owe Sometimes clients do come up with all kinds of ideas in order to change uh, something and design changes. There could be uh, area, uh, error detected uh, while you are doing uh, your work. So those kind of things we need to monitor because it will influence the time and even the worst scenario could be uh, we need additional costs in order to fulfill uh, everything uh, that happened uh, at our construction uh, project, for instance. When do we monitor, okay? End of the project. Well, actually, all these things are relevant. Yes, sometimes end of the project, we need to basically come up with the report, the overall report. 
and the overall report can only be done if everything is completed. That is true. Continuously, yes, in terms of updating project schedule, you need to update every day. Some big, big organization require a contractor, for instance, to submit the updated version of the, uh, uh, what we call network diagram or the schedule by 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, if you need to fulfill that kind of uh, requirement, you need to have a proper project planner at the construction project. You cannot basically depend on project manager or site engineer because they do have a lot more things to do than looking at a computer and to get all the information. Uh, regularly, continuously, logically. Uh, logically meaning to say when something happened, especially when you want to submit pro uh, progress claim that normally come at the end of the month, for sure you need to step up your, uh, your updated version or whatever thing that you have. Otherwise, your claim might not be uh, satisfactory according to the client view, so you do not want to do that. While there is time to react, uh, this is the most important thing. So that's why monitoring and control is being done concurrently while the implementing process is going on. Because you want to react while you still have time so that you can revise your uh, next week planning, for instance, in order to catch up with what your, it could be your original plan. Okay. So if, for instance, you wait uh, and wait and wait until the end of the project, it is too late already. By that time, for sure, you can have all the data. What that is what monitoring is all about. You can have the nice plotting. But what is the point? Because it is too late already, you don't have time to, to, to react. As soon as possible, when something happened, especially with regard to uh, safety, let's say accident happened at one particular spot. Well, you cannot wait next two weeks. You need to do, uh, you need to investigate, you need to secure the, the area, you need to rectify because the, the DOSH officer will come, the police, office, police and all kind of people will uh, have a lot of interest to, uh, to go to your construction site. So that is the where you need to react very fast. At the task completion, for sure when your task completed, so that would be uh, the point that you can score. Sometime in a certain, certain project or client, uh, especially JKR, if I'm not mistaken, they do have uh, some kind of uh, point. For instance, if the activity is already completed, then you give one point. If not, then basically you do not score anything. So this is just uh, a simple, okay? A simple arithmetic in order to know how many tasks have been completed and how many tasks is still uh, in progress, uh, what not. Okay, uh, so you can use whatever monitoring uh, uh, indicator as long as you you understand what you are doing. Uh, don't have to be very complicated. Okay, don't have to be the one in the books. So you can invent whatever thing as long as you can understand and it is meaningful. So sometimes it is much easier uh, that way, but it is not going to be uh, one method is not going to be uh, self-sufficient. You need to use many, many, many things in order to have the complete picture. At the pre-planned decision point, a certain milestone, milestone means to say uh, when you move into one activity to another activity or whatever the start of important event. Okay. Where do we monitor? Is it at the head office? at the site, on the spot, depend on situation and what. So everything is basically true. If uh, in a contractual uh, kind of uh, setting up, contractor do have headquarters, but then the project is not at the headquarters. Headquarters is just meant to, to manage the overall uh, site uh, project. You, you might have project everywhere in the nation anyway. But you need to report to the headquarters. Similarly, like JKR, they do have all projects everywhere uh, around the nation, but they need to report to the big boss there. Okay? So the big, the big boss need to know because he also need to report to the minister or whatever. Okay? So there must be some kind of system where you basically uh, invented or basically purchased 
or input so that people can get the information as uh, as, as fast as possible okay and then at the side office for sure this uh, this is where thing is happening you need to 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 have some kind of uh, monitoring system there on the spot especially with regard to the safety uh, accident for instance ha accident happen at one particular place or spot so that will be the your focal point for that uh, that particular day or week, you need to resolve when issue problem happen. Okay, depend on situation and what. Yeah, for sure, we never know. Okay, the quality issue. So certain uh, certain uh, work has been rejected by the consultant, for instance. Uh, so so you focus on that particular uh, area or situation. You need to rectify. Okay. How do we monitor? And this is what we call monitoring method or tools. For instance, meeting. So you might basically wonder why do we have meeting after meeting and after meeting? Because meeting is basically is one of the monitoring tools. Because it is when the meeting you are being asked uh, a lot of questions and you need to answer and because uh, meeting normally being held with uh, many many people it, so it depends on time of the meeting anyway so that is when the the decision happen or being minuted etc etc being recorded and people even can bring the minute of meeting to the court when you have some kind of dispute so be careful in the meeting okay whatever thing that you say can normally is if it is being minuted then people can come back and uh, ask for that Okay, uh, then for scheduling. So for instance, if you draw the bar chart or even the network diagram in uh, whatever software, Microsoft project, for instance, tomorrow we are going to look at those things, example. Then you, uh, let's say, if for instance, you update the project. If you just simply develop the project scheduling, for sure you cannot see the updated version. Updated version means to say you input the real date or the real uh, work progress, then you can see a uh, certain indicator being shown in the software, whether the activity is completed or on progress. It can be shown in terms of the uh, whatever graphic, network diagram graphic, or even tracking gun. And then it will basically give all the values into a certain table uh, what we call um, summary, summary table, and then all kind of variants. Uh, you can uh, see that indicate the uh, the current progress of the project. Earn value analysis. Uh, this is one of the example that we can uh, look at. Okay. After this, we are going to zoom into earn value analysis. Critic calculate critical ratio. Uh, as I mentioned, whatever thing that you can invent in order to uh, to to understand the quick way of uh, looking at the project, by all means you can you can do that. Okay, not if for instance you do not know how to use earn value, don't use until you fully understand. Okay, use the thing that you uh, that that is meaningful to to you. Milestone meaning to say the certain uh, date, okay, certain important date that is being set. And normally we want to know whether we have achieved uh, the target date or not, okay. Report, uh, there are so many report that we prepare that can be used. Example of the uh, progress report, okay. In progress report, you have all kind of information. Uh, what are the activity being completed, how much in terms of quantity, and uh, normally in the progress report, you have all kind of uh, progress photo as well. And then uh, you will input, uh, you will uh, basically put your physical s curve and financial s curve there, etc, etc. Test and inspection, all kind of testing. Testing normally related to quality control issue. Why in the construction industry we do have all kind of tests, test after test and after test. Even if you want to uh, to pour the concrete, you need to do the slum test or workability test. 
then you need to uh, to to put those things into cube so that later on you will uh, you will test the strength. So all those things basically end up to be at the dump site. It's a waste of money anyway. But then there is uh, so far we do not have the method to to come up with a proper uh, quality control. That could be one of the best method that we have because we cannot trust anybody. That is the issue. If everybody work according to the specification uh, can be trusted, then we don't have to do that. Perhaps we can save money. So testing, you know, from whatever information that we have, it can cost around maybe easily, easily like 3% of the total uh, project cost. See, there is a lot of amount, amount of money that you you spend on testing and testing and testing. And then uh, inspection. Inspection is one form of uh, you observe things, you go directly and see, similar to the site visit as well. Uh, delivery and staggered delivery. You can, this is especially related to material, material control, okay, material control. Sometimes we control at the point where it is being, uh, material is being manufactured in order uh, to secure the material from the right place. If we secure the material from the right place, meaning to say, uh, we, hello, yes. Uh, your, uh, what's the difference between inspection and uh, site visit? I thought inspection also is considered as you you inspect on, on site, right? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Inspection oh. is more, inspection is more uh is what we call is more it's more official. Normally you do have some kind of thing that you want to inspect, specific things. Okay. Focus on specific oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you can inspect for instance uh in terms of what we call uh crane, the safety of the crane, daily safety of the crane, scaffolding. So normally the uh the uh, what we call the competent person that know what to inspect will will go and check okay site visit anybody can do the site visit uh, especially minister will go for the site visit so uh, site visit is one form of the inspection as well but you can go just simply site visit and see what could be the progress in order to double check let's say the uh, contractor claim that they have installed this thing in this thing so you wanted to know, is it true or not? Okay, especially with regard to the client. Client might not be most of the time at the construction site. Okay, uh, checklist, check off list or checklist. Uh, maybe in this in in the inspection, you might bring the checklist. You can develop all kind of checklists that you want. There are many many checklists that you can Google with regard to all kind of things. Uh, you can get from the internet or even you can develop yourself so that you can make it easy. So nowadays with the uh, utilization of what we call a, a handphone, whatever you can develop into the the tab or just simply handphone, it is like people who deliver uh, all the, the thing that we order from Shopee or Lazada, and now they are using those kind of thing. So in construction industry, maybe in Malaysia, we might not see those things yet, but in overseas, they have been using all kind of uh, a gadget in order to help them to input the uh, what we call thing that they check and then uh, those information will be relayed to the office or even headquarters etc etc okay now we in Malaysia we still use pen and paper anyway and then lastly project information management system uh, this is an uh, example of if, for instance, you have the checklist, you do you do the inspection, testing, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, where basically you input all this material. If you use the old way of doing things, you might put them in file. But you, certain people, in order to get access to the file, have to go to the construction site, then they can only see. But if you do have what if, whatever the integrated system, a software either you can purchase or develop your own then all the information will be integrated so you not only you can basically monitor in terms of the financial or physical progress but you can have all kind of information that you basically uh, uh, want to know this is what we call project management information system 
Okay, so we already mentioned about meeting. Uh, meeting is one of the monitoring tool because in during the meeting is uh, when you answer question, you make decision, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you have to be very careful when you say something because next week there is there will be another meeting. People will ask you, oh, last week you mentioned uh, that you wanted to do that, and what happened? Uh, if you cannot uh, fulfill uh, the thing that you promised, you better take MC for that day. Uh. And then monitor progress against schedule. This is an example of uh, what we call time uh, time monitoring. Okay, time monitoring. Later on, I will give you some example. Uh, monitor the project uh, cost and expanded. What we call this? Sorry. Uh, expanded. Whatever thing that you expand, we already learned about the cash flow in terms of the cash out and cash in. So at the end of the day, you can uh, draw similar graph that we have learned, uh, cash out and cash in. So you, you will know how much you already spend and how much money you, you are in, especially with regard to the uh, cash requirement. Example of project monitoring that uh, I want to uh, show in this slide, just a few simple example, time measurement, Cost, me cost measurement, labor time management, and work quantity measurement. Let's zoom into the time measurement method. This is one of the most common, uh, what we call um, project monitoring that we can uh, uh, rely on using our gun chart. Okay, so that's why you cannot basically do monitoring and control without the scheduling. You simply cannot because you need the scheduling in order to 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 uh, to come up with uh, the all the indicator. For instance, the S curve. You cannot draw S curve without the uh, your scheduling because S curve is coming from your scheduling or what we call gun chart. Okay, let's take an example of this simple gun chart that normally have this what we call time scale. You can use whatever time scale that you want, uh, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever thing. If your project is running for a long period of time, maybe uh, monthly, that will be the best. Okay. okay, let's take an example of this thing. We do have duration of each activity. Let's say duration is basically we are using weekly, okay? Uh, first activity is four weeks, or oh, all the activity is four weeks, four weeks, four weeks. Then it is easier. Okay, let's take a look at the time scale. Here, week number one, okay, week number one, uh, what could be the activity running on week number one? It looks like this portion of activity one running. And uh, let's say week number one, and how many work is going to be performed according to the bar chart is uh, one week. So this is what we call one week of work worth uh, in that particular time scale, okay? Don't get confused with the time scale and the work in the bar chart. The work in the bar chart reflect the work effort. You basically, you bring all the resources there, then basically you need to spend one week of time in order to perform certain activity. Okay, in, uh, in week number two, according to the project duration, okay, week number two, this is week number two, and uh, look at what are the activity running for week number two, it looks like portion of activity one and portion of activity two is going to be performed. And if you add those things, uh, first week for activity one and first uh, uh, one week for activity uh, two as well, so you will get two. So that is how you get the total of what we call work effort. And then in week number three, looks like there are three activity, uh, three activity one, two, and three will be running concurrently and each basically uh, worth one week. So one, two, two, three, so you get three weeks of work effort. And activity and duration uh, in the fourth uh, week, uh, there are three activity running, so three. And in the fifth week, one, two, three, four. There are four weeks of work here, four weeks of work. And then on activity on um, week number six, it will be four uh, week of work and activity num 
number seven, that would be week number seven will be five. So this is how you get this value in terms of uh, activity duration, okay, weekly. Then running, running meaning to say cumulative, cumulative, okay, cumulative uh, amount of work or in terms of duration. So the first week is basically one, and then one plus two, you will get three. That is what we call cumulative. Three plus three, the above value, you will get six. Six plus three on the above value, at the above value, you get nine. And then at the end of the day, you will get 36. So 36 is basically the cumulative um, activity duration. Okay, don't get confused with the time scale. Time scale indicate uh, 12 week of work, but in that 12 week of work, the work, uh, the the effort that you need to basically put is basically 36. So once you get that value, you can use this value in order to draw what we call physical uh, S curve. So that so this uh, point here is basically equivalent to this value. 1, 3, 6, 9, etc. until 36. So meaning to say, uh, where is it? Okay. So this is what we call equivalent to 36. This is what we call plan. Plan. This graph could be physical. Physical S curve. So physical S curve is being drawn according to the duration of activity. Okay. So how do we get all this uh, dot value there? It's basically from this cumulative. And you can use uh, the uh, what we call exist here in terms of the duration. But normally, if you put in terms of duration, people might confuse with this uh, exist because this exist is also the duration. But don't uh, th this duration is basically the project duration. But this duration basically belong to activity duration. You can basically instead of doing that, you can convert this thing into percentage. For instance, how do you convert into percentage? One divided by the 36 times 100, so you will get the percentage. So you can put into percentage, so this is basically equivalent to 100%, similar to this one. Okay, so this one is basically 100%. Uh, you can put into percentage, it is much easier instead of putting in terms of what we call activity, uh, duration, uh, weeks, days, month, or whatever. Okay. So once you already uh, come up with the what we call plan, the S-curve based on physical graph, then monitoring. Okay. Project monitoring, remember, is the process of collecting information, getting all the feedback in order to know the status. So, you, uh, that's why the uh, supervisor or engineer, they basically, most of the time, site engineer, they are at the construction site, they know that particular day, how much activity they basically have already performed, they need to record and send the feedback to the people who need to input the information. So, monitoring is the process of getting these graphs. This is what we call actual progress. You can no, we normally put into different color, dotted, whatever color. So you cannot get the this actual progress if you do not do the monitoring, uh, uh, the monitoring process. The monitoring process is to collect the information, and the outcome of monitoring is example is this dotted line. You see, monitoring you only uh, get the information. But if, for instance, after getting information, you do not do anything, so that person is basically going to plot this thing again and again and again and again and again, again until here. Okay, now we already reached 100%. So this is what we call monitoring. We do not want this thing to happen. So that's why controlling come uh, together with monitoring. Uh, let's take a look at week number four. This is what we call status report. 
status report on week number four. Let's say after four weeks, then uh, you basically come up with certain report. Four weeks is late already because your project is only 12 weeks, but that's okay. Just want to give example. Okay, then you figure out that. Uh, please. Okay. Let's say on the fourth week, you come up with the uh, project monitoring uh, figure here, actual progress, and you figure out that you are getting these values, 70%, for instance. Whereas in the plan, uh, in the plan here, this is the plan, uh, could be 25%, let's say 25%, okay? So from that, you already know, you are lagging behind you are behind schedule by how many percent it is uh, five by eight percent okay you are running late by eight percent uh, that is example as simple as that okay but again we need to be very careful with all kind of this uh, indicator because it's, this is what we call indicator indicator meaning to say it trigger alertness okay oh okay I mean, in the computer for instance it will show you that you are running late but then you cannot basically trust the indicator 100%. You need to basically go and check what could be the issue. Uh, then, then only that could be the, uh, the, the right thing to do. Indicator is just indicator. It might not be uh, accurate anyway. It is like indicator on your car, on your car meter. In a modern car, there they could be many, many indicators, especially with regard to the uh, petrol, how many miles that you can go. Well, you, you can use that thing as indicator, but sometimes it's not accurate also because it depends on um, your driving distance. That's how the thing is being uh, calculated. Okay, but it is nice to have indicator because otherwise it's very difficult to, to, to talk to people. While everybody basically keep asking, okay, what, what is the progress of your project? Then how are you going to answer? You cannot describe to them Okay, uh, by last week, we already uh, completed concrete on this floor and that floor, and oh, that will be a long answer. You just simply mentioned we already reached 20% uh, of the progress. Okay, so if people do not know about your project, they, they do not have the idea also, okay, in terms of, uh, they cannot really imagine what, uh, to what extent you have achieved certain, certain thing, because they need to have the overall picture of what the building looks like. But it is meant for the people who basically uh, are related to that project, okay? So that is how uh, we use basically the field vehicle progress. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, week number eight. If you do nothing, you just uh, keep doing the monitoring pro pro progress, of course you are going to uh, come up with this uh, uh, extended uh, graph there. Then you notice that by eight week, you are 42% because you are working at the current rate, whereas your actual progress, uh, your plan progress should be 75%. Now, the gap between the actual and the plan is getting bigger and bigger. So that's why normally in the first week, if you do update your project every day, perhaps by the, the next day, you already know whether you are running late or not. So at the end of the first week, you already know whether you are running late. So you need to take action. You need to speed up, for instance. You need to come up with the improved method of doing things so that you can, uh, what we call, um, bring back. Uh, that is the, 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 the term normally being used, bring back the progress to the plan progress. So when you bring back, this is the uh, the controlling, okay, the controlling process. You wanted to bring this graph so that it basically follow what you have planned, providing that you uh, the, the plan curve is being uh, being developed uh, carefully. But the issue is that sometimes people who develop this uh, original plan also make a lot of mistake they, because they do not know how to, to, to plan properly, they just simply come up with the whatever plan, okay, 
now they already have the S curve, but then they figure out there could be a lot of uh, thing being not included in the original plan as the plan is not holistic or realistic. But that's okay. Even in worst scenario, you can always come up with the re revised plan because you still have time. Okay, nobody can stop you. The client cannot stop you from uh, reinventing or recalibrate yourself, whatever. So you still have time in order to catch up, in order to speed up, etc., etc. Okay, so monitoring is again is the process of getting the information. Once you get the information, then only you know uh, to what extent you need to react. React is basically control. That is basically example of uh, time measurement uh, method. Okay, cost measurement method is almost similar because we are using the similar example because remember uh, our scheduling, the gun chart uh, is the result of resources that we use. How do we get uh, duration, remember, is from the all the resources, the combined resources that we uh, we choose, so at the end of the day, we get the project or activity duration, okay? And from the selection of the resources, then we get the cost. Remember, the cost is the combination of man, machine, and material, which constitute the big amount of the uh, construction cost, could be around 90%. But if you are giving uh, the grant chart to the client, normally, uh, the your scheduling already include the profit, but if you are, uh, if you use this kind of uh, scheduling for yourself, you might want to separate between uh, the profit and then the value and then the cost. You might as well just simply put the the uh, gun chart with the cost only because you wanted to know to what extent you have. Uh, go beyond your budgeted costs. Okay, cost measurement. Let's take a look at the same example again. Now, instead of uh, using the duration to come up with the, uh, this is what we call financial S curve. Now you are using the cost. So on top here, this is what we call 20K. So you, by right, we should have a column of uh, 20K. Maybe we can put it here, 20K. And then this could be 32K, and this is 40K, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So we are using what we call uh, equally distributed costs. This is just example. Normally in uh, academic, we just simply distribute them equally. In, in reality, you might not want to, to distribute them equally because it reflects on the actual uh, spending anyway. Okay, let's say on week number one, again, using the time scale. So this is the week number one. What could be the activity running on that particular week? So it looks like only activity uh, one running for one week, but we want to use the, the value or the cost. Let's say the cost is 5K. So that will be the cost. And on week number two, what could be the cost? Eight plus uh, five equivalent to 13. And then on week number three, five plus eight plus 10 equivalent to 23 and et cetera, et cetera. It looks like here we do have the most activity running. If you add all those value, that will be equivalent to 54. That will be the weekly uh, amount uh, being spent on uh, activity, okay? Running at that particular week. Then running meaning to say cumulative, cumulative. Okay, cumulative weekly value or weekly cost. So five here, five plus 13 will be 18. 18 plus 23 will be 41. And you will get this value, 332. You can uh, use this value in order to plot the S curve for financial. This is what we call plan, plan S curve. Uh, plan financial ESCA, for instance. Uh, so this could be 332. This amount 332K. You can convert into percentage if you want by dividing. 
Let's take a look at this. 5 divided by 3, 3, 2 times 100%. So you will get whatever percent. So instead of using uh, the value as on this axis, you can convert into percentage. Okay. So next would be, this is what we call original plan. When the project is being progressed, you will basically monitor and then you update. Okay, you update how much exactly you basically spend. Let's say normally if you are running late, like this activity, okay, by right, you basically should be spending less. You cannot basically uh, uh, running late in terms of physical uh, progress, but then you spend more. Uh, this is what happened to certain uh, controversial project, isn't it? Maybe you have heard some of the project progress only 30%, but the payment is already 80%. Uh, uh, that sounds illogical. Of course, we, uh, some of the uh, project activity could be like that in terms of mechanical, electrical, or certain, certain things, because we know that the material itself contribute the most in terms of the pricing. But in normal construction, uh, that that basically require point to investigate. Okay, let's say you basically this is what we call your financial progress. So again, in the, the week number four, whatever week that you choose. So now basically you might have uh, the value, how much basically you are spending, and how much basically you are supposed to be spending. Okay, so if you spend less, meaning to say. There are many activities that you have, you, uh, you do not perform yet. That's why uh, you cannot claim more because there are a lot of activity basically not uh, completed yet. Okay, that could be um, the thing with regard to uh, this graph. So automatically, when you uh, you update your uh, you you basically you. Uh, you control your project, you speed up, and then basically this graph will be catching up with the uh, plan, uh, what we call uh, S-curve, because when you do more activity, for sure you are going to spend more, okay? Uh, that is the concept. Okay, that this thing is basically might be confused a little bit with the, with the thing that we are going to go, especially with regard to earn value management graph later on. So let's see how. Okay. Then the third method, labor time management. Okay, labor time management. Labor time management is basically is a simple way of uh, measuring. Maybe you measure in terms of man hours, man day, and man week on certain activities. Let's say certain activity you are supposed to, um, for instance, let's say the activity of um, what we call uh, painting, painting work. Okay, let's say you need to spend uh, one day, okay, and one day you need to basically complete 100 man hours of work, painting work. Okay, that is according to what you plan. But then in reality, okay, in the actual progress, because you cannot get workers and the workers that come to work might not be as competent as what you 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 uh, you basically uh, original plan because in planning you normally plan based on whatever information that you have but in reality it might not be like that so you only getting 80 man hours of work done per day for instance so from this from 80 divided 100, you already know that you are running late by 20% daily in terms of uh, man hours spent. So if you keep doing this thing again and again every day, for sure your project is going to be running late because what you plan is not the same. So this is the easier, much easier way of uh, measuring thing. As I mentioned, you can use whatever method as long as you understand and your workers might understand. So they know they are running late. There is no point of uh, telling people, giving them all the physical and financial escape, but nobody understand, okay? 
So in a smaller scale, you can use this thing. Work quantity measurement. Ah, you can use uh, this kind of method. Quantity is something we can measure. We can see, we can, uh, we can count how many things is being done. Let's take example of ceiling. Uh, panel ceiling. Nowadays in modern uh, office building, we do have all kind of panel ceiling with the standard signs. We know that we need to install how many uh, ceiling per day. Let's say we need to install 100 uh, piece of ceiling, uh, piece of ceiling per day, for instance. We have, we do have, we bring group of people Okay, maybe many, many people. We expect that uh, if we go for the full capacity, we can achieve this. But in reality, let's say we can only manage to install, uh, sorry, 90 pieces of, 90 pieces of uh, ceiling per day due to many, many factors. Okay, so from here, we already know. 90 pieces divided by 100, you are you are lagging in terms of 10% of the work progress, okay? So in construction, there are many, many things which we can attach to the quantity. So maybe that would be much easier uh, in order to uh, tell people what is your current progress because quantity you basically can see, can touch, can, can count, etc., etc. Okay. So, uh, so far, we already mentioned there are many, many methods of monitoring. The one that we zoom in is basically time and uh, cost measurement. Time is the one that we always associate with a uh, physical S curve. And then uh, cost is the one that we associate with the financial S curve. It is, it is the tool that being widely used all around the world. But again, uh, those things are meant to be indicator, and there are a lot more indicators, especially in earn value also, you, we can generate indicators. So indicators is meant to alert you what could be the situation, but in order to confirm, you need to further investigate what basically really happened, okay? Sometimes, for instance, you uh, spend, uh, in terms of, uh, 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 financial progress, it looks like you are uh, following the uh, the original plan. But in terms of physical, it is behind. Uh, then basically you need to investigate what could be the issue. Okay. All right. Now we come into control. Uh, control, uh, monitoring and control. Control is basically, so you have the original plan. Okay. You might have the specification, especially related to the quality control. Uh, you, we do have what we call a uh, network diagram and uh, gun chart in, with regard to the schedule and then cost control I mean, many, many type of uh, things that we can use as the original uh, reference. Okay. Then monitor. Monitor is the process of collecting feedback or information. Then you compare. Uh, if we are talking about project scheduling and planning. So we are going to zoom into our uh, schedule in terms of physical and what we call financial progress and then take action. And this thing basically go on and on. This is what we call similar to what we call uh, a damming cycle, EDCA concept, okay? So project control is basically, uh, is the process to correct deviation in uh, scheduling, for instance, deviation is better known as a variance. Uh, variance. We do have what we call schedule variance. We do have what we call uh, what we call uh, cost variance. Okay. All right. So there are many many things that we can control. Not only uh, time, uh, safety control also is there. Quality control, environmental control. And then even uh, contractual issue control, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, as long as um, it help in order to uh, bring back the progress to what you already uh, planned originally. 
technique for monitoring control uh, that we want to zoom in after this is basically example of earn value. Critical ratio is whatever ratio that you can use. Okay, so in this slide, we do have a few example of earn value as well. But uh, earn value, we are going to take a break after this and we are going to zoom into earn value using uh, different slide. Okay, okay, so in that slide, I do have a lot more example. So critical ratio, this is just example of ratio. Critical ratio is just simply the whatever thing that you can invent. For instance, uh, ratio of actual progress divide the schedule progress, budgeted cost divide by actual cost. You, so you have some kind of values. So that value is easier for you to see. This this is like index. Okay, in earn value, for instance, we do have all kind of values. So what does uh, value mean in terms of when it is equal to one, more than one, or below one? Sometimes the index could be negative, positive. So those are the things that we can use in order to, 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 to give us a sense of alertness. We need to, do, to, to check what is going on, okay? It is not to say that uh, when you look at certain indicator, you just, going to conclude that the situation is very bad. No, 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 you need to further investigate. So that is what indicator is all about. Okay, so that would be uh, uh, our, uh, the thing that I want to mention with regard to this slide, okay. We are going to take a break and then we are going to come back with the earn value explanation and then example, okay. So in summary, project monitoring and control is one of the most important element in the project management process. And in project management process, there is a planning. Planning is in the middle of that process as well. Inside the planning also, we do have what we call monitoring and control. So again, monitoring is to the process of getting the information. Once you have the information, then only you can react accordingly. We do not want to be overreact because whatever reaction that you do, for sure, it comes with the cost. So you do not want to throw your money uh, away without any basically significant uh, impact. Okay. But again, human, uh, that is the issue. Because most of the time when we are talking about the, when we implement things, it is the human that determine the success of whatever thing that we do. We can bring all the right equipment, uh, the right method and uh, the right, what we call material. But at the end of the day, if we do have a problem with a, a human, especially lack of motivation, uh, people working uh, in a low productivity, et cetera, et cetera, then basically at the end of the day for sure it will influence our planning okay so that's what this uh, what we call uh, construction management and even project management come into uh, either civil engineering field because most of the time engineer we basically learn a lot of uh, technical thing but we forget about the human uh, aspect, okay? All right then, okay. So that would be our uh, a topic based on the project monitoring and control. So now we take a 10 minute break before we go into our last um, slide. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.